Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now today I'm with Owen and Julian himself and today we're going to be talking about that of expanding consciousness and the understanding of raising our vibrational set point. This is a topic that Julie and I talk about all the time and we've been hanging out, we've been talking about this and the reason why we do this is because once you understand this whole idea of raising your state of consciousness, you will see the world in a completely different way. You'll see people walking around in the, what we kind of jokingly call a derp state, where they have this kind of cloud in their eye or this kind of facial expression that just looks like a lack of joy. And you'll see them walking around in, essentially it's, it's a light unconsciousness even while awake. And so what Aaron's talking about and what you and I are obsessed with is continually just raising that as you get older. And we see it because a lot of people who are, let's say they hit their 40s or their 50s, by the time that they've been in that grind of working a very repetitive job and yeah. bickering with their loved ones and you know fighting with their family and, and, and playing the victim card and all that kind of stuff in, that, in those lower states of consciousness, by the time they're 40 or 50, they're oftentimes have just had their face kicked into the dirt by the boot of life. Mm -hmm. And they've lost that childlike joy, that playfulness, their creativity. And what we think is that as you get older, you want to actually magnify that. You want to be more playful, more joyful, more alert, more alive, smarter, more capable, more competent, have more energy to do the things that you want to do. And that's a beautiful thing. And that's why we're so passionate about sharing this type of work. Now, Julian's done this within the framework of releasing trauma and getting people to, to do energetic releases of things that have clasped onto them or trauma energy and letting it out. And a focus that I've had along with really being on board with that and loving what he's doing there is even just in my regular day-to-day -day life, getting out and socializing with people, laughing with people, getting, you know, taking in influences that are positive and uplifting, mm -hmm. you know, doing things that are good for the spirit, good for the soul, eating food that actually elevates your state of mind, even things like Eastern herbs. A really big one for me is sauna. I love Russian yeah. banya, getting yeah. in the hot sauna, infrared sauna, jumping in cold plunge pools, um, cryotherapy. Anything in my experience that it, it sort of gives this like light level of discomfort, but it forces mm -hmm. you to align to presence and it gets really addictive. Once you know what presence feels like or what it feels like to be in what we would call a higher state of consciousness, you get addicted to it. And as you move up, you start to empathize with people that are not as far along the road and your mission in many ways becomes I want to spread this, I, you know, because you feel a different type of energy and you want to share it with others. And then funny enough, the more that you share it with others, the more that you move up too. It's kind right. of a crazy thing. Yeah. So that's something that I've done through a lot of socializing and laughter. My, my favorite thing to do is like Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, just go out to some place where there's lots of people, just talk to everybody there, crack jokes with everybody, make everybody have so much fun. And, you know, Julian's done that for years. I know that you love to socialize. And also just through my day-to-day -day life, it's just integrated into my life, reading books on it, studying it, sharing it. Mm -hmm. And then Julian, of course, has done that through his work in, he calls it Transformation Mastery, Transformation Mastery Academy, and basically just sharing that work of getting people to release trauma because oftentimes traumas that we've been to or that we've been through become this kind of like refrigerator hum of low vibration energy and we don't even notice it. Right. We don't even feel it until we let it go and it's like, whoa. Because it's on autopilot. That was affecting me for so long. Right. We've taught hundreds of thousands of people face to face, millions online, and it's really been a beautiful experience. I mean, we've been traveling the world for years teaching this. It's fun watching you now getting into teaching live and I'm just seeing what you're doing. I, you're, I, I'm gonna say it here first. I wanna be the first. I think you're gonna crush it. Thank you. I think I you are going it. to crush it. Said it first here, okay? <laughs> <Appreciate> <laughs> My little Louis. We'll <laughs> the biggest quality that I see that people, that shoves them into a low vibration state is they do what I would call, they major in minor things. Mm -hmm. So, the, like, life is so beautiful. There, there's so much to life. There's, if you ever actually just truly look into the eyes of another person, or you know, you're just petting your dog, or you're walking in nature, or you're even walking, I mean, heck, even just like a, a, a man-made strip mall. There can be incredible beauty, obviously some more than others, but you know, there can be truly incredible beauty in anything that you look at. You can just look at a simple apple, and if you just really look at it, like I would say, if you're watching right now, try just looking at the palm of your hand for a minute, and looking at the finest little details in it. You know, or, or just look at, you know, if I look at the railing here, really, really closely, or take a breath, just take a deep breath and notice how it feels. Life is such a miracle, it's so incredible. And we live in a time where, 
And this is, you know, maybe the environment can go to crap eventually and it won't be like this. But right now, at this moment, even though there's a lot of troubling things happening, we live in a society that could be so amazing. We live in a society where you, you, can, you have websites you can go to to just travel the entire world. We have education available online to make an incredible amount of money. We have understanding of health where even though there's still a lot of controversy around which health approaches work, there's a lot of incredible information about health, wealth building, raising your consciousness, raising your vibration. There's so much that we can do. There's so much potential to life. And what we tend to do in a lower vibration state is we major minor things. Mm -hmm. Oh, Janet bothered me at work. Oh, she didn't respect me. That guy cut me off in traffic. I'm a victim. And why is it that in, in spiritual work, being a victim is one of the big topics versus say gratitude? Well, as you raise your vibration, you go from being a victim to gratitude. One thing that we found was really helpful was say, speaking with somebody who might be homeless and seeing the struggle that they have. And oftentimes, if you want to understand low vibration thinking, if you speak to a homeless person who feels very victimized, you mm -hmm. can see that his state of consciousness is now manifesting in his external circumstances. I want to be aware that that's a very touchy subject, right, you know, right. and we have a lot of empathy for that. But you can see that, and conversely, you can see people living an incredible life, and you see the different things they focus on. So are you gonna focus, are you gonna major in minor things and focus on that person at work that pissed you off, or right. you know, that restaurant that didn't honor your reservation? And you see a lot of spiritual people who talk about these higher ideals until the restaurant doesn't honor their reservation, right. until they get cut off in traffic. I've had a spiritual teacher, I love this guy, to death, but you know, he, you know, I'm taking a class on spiritual growth and then he gets out to his car, there's a parking ticket, and he's like kicking the tire. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he's losing his mind because of a parking ticket. And I'm sure there's probably a lot of ways we could look at that. But the point being is when you when you get out of, we see a lot of society majoring in minor things. Even when you eat unhealthy food, when you start smoking cigarettes, when you start putting harmful things in your body, wasting your time, you're, you're not resonating with all the incredible opportunity. You're right. majoring in all this minor petty stuff. Pettiness is one of the great enemies of a truly great life. Whereas imagine what your life would look like if, Instead of spending your time on anything petty at all, you put 90% of your time on it just laughing, having fun, enjoying your moment yeah. to moment experience. Yep. And then from there, using that to open yourself up and working towards your highest goals, working towards learning, working towards contribution. And if you didn't just talk about this or theoretically sort of say, that sounds great, but really do it starting now and think of what your life would look like. And so once you're on this journey, it can, it can feel sometimes isolating because you're yeah. seeing people, you're in your little track, and you right. become who you hang out with, and in major, in most society, you see them, you know, kind of puffing cigarettes, drinking a Coca-Cola. It's weird in our society. If you're walking down the street with a cucumber or a stick of carrots, <laughs> you look like a weirdo. But if you've got some like processed, weird GMO, whatever, like whatever you think of this stuff, yeah. um, you know, you, it, that's completely normal. So you know, if you get crunk on a Friday night, that's normal. If you were in the club with an apple, <laughs> right? It's a green tea. You look like a weirdo. So that is the society in which we live. And, you know, I think this is something, you know, it, it can be isolating at times, but also it can also propel you into presence because you have to rise right. above it. But I know that's something Jew and I talk about a lot. We were kind of curious your, your take on that and how yeah. you feel in society. So, so the way that I view it is most people are just going down. What they're thinking of is they're completely in the autopilot mind. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking thoughts they've always thought. You know, there's that Dr. Do Dispenza type thing where he always says, or a lot of they say it for neuroscience. On average, we think 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day, and of those, 90% are recycled from the day before. So we're consistently going to work the same, you know, every day. We're talking to the same people, having similar type conversations. We're getting up on the same side of the bed. We're doing all the repetitive stuff over and over and over again. And that's triggering the same emotions, which is triggering the same actions, which is triggering the same everything. So most people, it's sad but true, a lot of people are in a deep hypnosis of society. And they are attached to the thinking of the thoughts they're thinking. That's why if you look at the chart of consciousness, maybe I'll put the chart right here just to show, and I know if you've been watching my channel, you've seen it many times, you'll notice that you see shame, fear, guilt. Eventually, you get up to a spot of neutrality. Now, in neutrality, that's where you learn how to observe your thoughts, where you learn to detach from those. And when you detach from them, you start to identify yourself a little bit differently. Now, when you identify yourself a little bit differently, you may find that the people that you've related to for your whole entire life 
all of a sudden you don't relate to them in the same way. And your closest family too, and the people you love. That too. Mm -hmm. And they, I, I had experience with my own family. When I went through my, what, what is called a spiritual awakening, which is where I learned how to observe my thoughts. I realized I didn't have to let the idea of ADHD hold me back even more because that's what doctors told me I had because I had so much energy. But you can fix it with meditation. Pharmaci <laughs> ph pharmaceutical exactly, med. exactly. Small doses of pharmaceutical Every med. single day. Uh. And that's why I took that. I took uh -huh. that. I worked at. Adderall uh, or, or I took. I took Adderall. Uh -huh. I worked at Barney. Or I worked at did Nordstrom's. Did you get a lot done? I got a lot done. Uh -huh. I I would work. I worked at Nordstrom's, and I was selling women's shoes, and I would sell a shitload. I would go in. <laughs> I would take. I would take one. I would go into work, and I would sell so much. But then I would go home at the end of the day, and my energy was just. I was. I couldn't sleep good at mm -hmm. night because the side effects of it are you don't sleep very much, and I couldn't eat a lot. So I was trying to gain weight, and I couldn't eat a lot. So. Having that hard side effects, man, there's got to be something else. So that's when I came across the research on meditation. And I at first I thought it was kind of woo-woo. I was like, oh, what is this old meditation stuff? Mm -hmm. I had all these ideas of mantras and shit. And I was like, I don't know if I resonate with this. But then I saw the science on it, which is like, okay, well, what does Adderall do? Adderall increases makes the you, dopamine. Makes you awesome. <laughs> it's the limitless, the limitless Lesson. pill. Take Adderall. <laughs> so... What I realized though is, okay, I'm looking like what Adderall does is it increases dopamine, right? And what I found out is that meditation makes you as well decrease the amount of cortisol, which is the stress hormone, and increase the amount of serotonin and dopamine. Mm. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna start learning this. So I started to learn it, and then my whole life changed because I started to see myself differently. I started to disidentify from my past, and I had, like, growing up and stuff, I had an abusive ex stepmom and stuff like that. So I went through a lot of pain between the ages of, like, seven to 15. Had no, she was, a, she was actually someone with borderline personality disorder. Got it. So uh, it was a very unique situation, but it was kind of like having an army general as, like, you know, we, me and my brother were locked outside. We had to work outside all the time, and we weren't allowed to eat very much food, so we were very malnourished and stuff like that. So it was a very unique situation. Sounds fun. But exactly. And then uh, I carried that even after 15 years old when my dad divorced her. I still carried that guilt. I still carried that I didn't feel like I was enough. And I know that's what something you talk mm. a lot about. So I didn't feel like I was worthy. I didn't feel enough. And because of that, I was going around and looking for it in many different ways. I would drink. I would smoke. I would do all of these things. Mm. And then when I learned meditation, I realized I no longer had to identify with the thoughts that I was having. And I realized I didn't have to even. I became aware of the definitions I had. And I realized my definitions were creating my reality. So I believed I had ADHD. I bought into that premise. So therefore, victim. I was a, a victim mentality. Mm -hmm. Exactly. There's something wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Resistance. Mm -hmm. And then I became aware of that label. I said, well, you know what? I'm going to reframe this. I just have a shitload of energy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground that by meditating and walking on grass barefoot or some mm -hmm. shit like that. That's what I did. And when I did that, it changed my whole entire life. My set point. I remember this. Now, I'm not, not saying I'm enlightened or anything like that, but my set point, I, I use this analogy for a lot. I used to feel on a scale of one to 10, about a four, a three to a five, which means I wasn't feeling really, really shitty, but I wasn't feeling that great either. After I learned meditation, my set point, I started to feel at about a seven to an eight out of 10. And I felt fucking high all of the time. And I remember walking around my room like, is this feeling going to go away? And it never really went away. But what happened is that became my natural set point. Like that just became who I am. And now the further down you go with consciousness, you realize that that scale of one to 10 that I'm talking about, I've realized recently that's actually a very limiting thing because it was actually beyond that. It's just that that's my current scale that I talk about. But nonetheless, what helped me raise that vibrational set point was learning to observe my thoughts, not identify with them, get to that neutrality. When I got to the neutrality, I let go of all of it and then I was able to be in a higher state. Now, this is the thing. You guys let me know what you think about this. I believe that our natural set point beyond social conditioning is actually feeling more of that higher vibrational state. So when you're doing what you're passionate about, it feels really good. When you are attached to the negative thinking, you don't feel so good. The key is not to pile on some new idea. It's not to get some new type of cool theory that's going to change everything. It's more so letting go of the shit that no longer serves. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've learned in my own life. That's what's merely made the, the change is observing the thoughts mm -hmm. and then choosing to let them go, knowing that the natural high vibrational state of consciousness of love, that's why people that are what we call enlightened anyways, like Osho or whatever, they've said before that enlightenment is more of a realization than mm -hmm. anything else mm -hmm. yep. because it's not something that you attain. People seeking enlightenment means they don't currently have it when at a vibrational level, that's really who we are, but that's when you get deeper into understanding, mm -hmm. you know, um, have you seen the uh, documentary about Osho? I have. I, I have. <laughs> so awesome. It's like, what a badass. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I saw it and I was I like, feel like Whoa. we're underperforming. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. 
It was uh, that was an interesting documentary. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, I thought maybe you would talk a little yeah. bit since a lot of his content is about understanding that we are enough, understanding that this level of worthiness, how that manifests and how we experience lack of that, how when you're seeking validation, everywhere you go, you find evidence that that's not there. But the funny thing is, is when you change your energy, like when you, when you start having and validating yourself, everyone else validates you when you don't even need it. So it's a funny paradox. So that's something you, yeah. you want to talk about? about that and your thoughts on society too. Like what, yeah. What, yeah. what you see when you walk down the street. Well, no, I really resonate with what you just said right here, where everyone is in this kind of autopilot state. The way I view it is like everyone is just stuck in constant reaction. And you could view it on a more surface level where if you take the typical person's day, and this definitely used to be me, you wake up and the f something triggers you. You know, nowadays it's probably like your cell phone. Like you wake up, first thing people do in the morning, it's like before they're even fully awake, they reach over, bright fucking blue light they're like and like start reading the text and just look for that one thing to just trigger the fuck out of them they're like oh, this person or, or even if it's the news this thing happened in the news and they're gonna right. keep scrolling until they find that thing and <laughs> that sets the tone of their day they're like oh my god politics they wake up they're like oh they go to the shower there's like oh fucking politics and then it's like they look at the time like, oh, how did the time fucking fly by? Shit, quickly, let's eat something. Get in the car. They're and, stuck and, in trouble. And, and momentum. what do they eat, by the way? I know, right? Like, just right. sugar, sugar and dairy. And Quick caffeine yeah. to wake up. To oh, yeah. push past their horrible diet. They yeah. The caffeine it's like stuck in reaction. Right. And then it's like, medicate, 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 or try to distract themselves. So it's like that feeling sparks it. They act from that. They get stuck in traffic. Someone cuts them off. Triggered again. Amplifies. They're like, oh, let's turn on the music. Try to distract myself. Get to a job that is not in alignment with who they are. At their job, they try to get into this derpier state to just let the day fly by. And I remember that. Like I, I, I used to do go to a lot of jobs I didn't like back in the day. And literally, I, I would. Why you medicated it too? Oh yeah. No. Well, me. <laughs> I did a multitude of jobs I hated. The, the, mo the job I hated the most was doing, it was cold calls. So cold calls selling car warranties. I did this for like three months um, and it, w it just killed me inside. Why it was a horrible job and number two, just the mission behind it was like, you're, you're basically trying to sell stuff that people don't need and con old people into buying it. Like that was the boss. The boss was like, as soon as you get an old person, jackpot. And I was like, <laughs> it was it was horrible. It was the worst atmosphere. So I'm going there and I'm like, what am I doing with my life? And I would just try to dirt myself. I'm like, I'm not here. If I try to not think the day will fly by and I would try to get in the state so the day flies by. And then you go home and you feel horrible that you're still carrying that from the day. You just eat some junk food, quickly put on some TV and basically stay up until you can finally just pass out. And the next day you wake up and it's the same thing over and over and over again, just living in reaction. And people can't snap out of it because you're just constantly following this chain. It's like effect, effect, effect. You're always at the effect. There's that famous saying, you know, if you don't have a plan for yourself, someone else will. Yeah. That reactive, say, thing that's running you that has a plan for you. And then going even deeper, what is that reactive thing? It's being stuck in say, a lower consciousness state of being, um, reacting from say, past trauma, whatever is running you, and no one addresses that. You know, We just mm -hmm. always run from it. And even our solutions, we try to find these surface layer solutions, which are still an escape. And this is tying it to where you were saying also about letting go, why letting go is so key. because say the traditional approach, you might realize, okay, I'm reactive, I don't feel good enough, I'm in, I'm in a lower state of consciousness, what can I do to go from here to up here? And it doesn't work that way. Because even from you trying to go from down here to up here, you're doing it in reaction to this. Like say, I wanna be confident. You'll never actually be confident because it's in reaction to you not being confident to begin with. I wanna be happy. In reaction to you not being yeah. happy, it keeps alive. I want to be enough keeps the fact that you're not enough alive. And that's why the goal isn't how do I get from up down here to up here? It's how do I realize I'm up here? What are the right. lies I've bought into that are holding me there? And then letting go of all that, you realize more and more that you're already there. And funny enough, the more you move up. And it's something to reflect on too. It's like you can't become enough. You can't. Because it means 
you're not enough to begin with. You can only start by being enough. And then the journey becomes identifying all those, those things that are telling you you're not enough and letting them go. And that takes you down this whole other journey where you can look at some surface things like, hmm, okay, I guess I believe this. Let's release the charge around it. But then it's like, what are some past experiences that I haven't validated, that I haven't integrated yet? Past trauma, for example, different core beliefs. And you got to really venture down. Like it all starts with awareness yeah. in your life, but even in your own mind, like venture down in your shadow. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with shadow work. If not, look that up. Yeah. Um, sure. But that's the thing that really, I mean, changed my life in ways, with, I mean, I couldn't even imagine. It was like, wow, it's not about adding more or optimizing, which is the traditional self-help mm -hmm. route. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with that, by the way. Um, one of my, the, the things I say all the time is, it's not the thing, but the place it's coming from. Like, go make money, go be successful, but don't do it coming from a place of lack. Yeah. You know, be enough and then do it from there. And you'll be surprised, you will still be motivated. We're conditioned to believe we're only motivated if it's like carrot and stick approach. Um, no, if you had all the money in the world right now, your assumption is like, well, then I wouldn't work. It's like, no, you'd still do something, but coming from a different place. Yeah. That's how your life changes. So diving into your subconscious, identifying it, um, letting go of it, looking at different patterns in your life, everything's awareness. Um, one practice that I love too, in terms of bringing stuff up is um, doing a death meditation. I don't know if you've ever done that, where it's like you literally sink into the perspective of I just died right now. You know, but that's intense. Yeah, it gets really intense. It's super dark. You're like, what a death meditation. But just singing into that perspective. Okay, imagine you died right now. Just because you sink into the fact that you died, and if you can really buy into I died, it will release a lot of resistance around those things you really buried in, you could say, your subconscious or your shadow. If those things you think or a part of you thinks, if I become aware of them, I'll die. Now that you're dead, you no longer have to lie to yourself anymore. So those things will float up to the surface and then you can catch them and either say act on them and do something about it or let go of them. So awareness, letting go. Awareness, letting go will change your life in ways you cannot imagine. And don't be afraid of bringing your awareness to quote unquote dark things. Um, you know, with the, the law of attraction, which I completely believe in, but there's like this belief where it's like, I must always be positive, always be positive. Right. And like mask. Yeah, and it's like, okay, well, that's true, but if you're forcing yourself to be positive, that means you're not positive. There's still I, stuff I think that's they there. I also understand that, but it's just that in movies like The Secret, they have to cover it so quick. Yeah. They don't have a lot of time to that's true. cover right. everything. So they're right. just yeah. trying to get people into the first layer, but then they think that's all there is, and then... But I'm yeah. saying here with the law of attraction, don't use that as an excuse to not dive into the, the things you must work. process. It's yes. like, just because you're not aware of something doesn't mean it isn't active. We all have all these thoughts like, in the background, it's like, you're not good enough, you sucked, and it's like, you gotta become aware of it first to process it. Don't try to avoid it. The crazy thing is that a lot of those things in their subconscious mind, between the ages of being born up until about the ages of eight to 10 years old, you're in primarily a theta state, which means that everything in your environment, you are a sponge soaking up information, and it could have been as something as small as your mom saying something to you. Uh, you ever see like, I always, I always think of like, how this will affect like a kid, for example, when you ever see at like a grocery store, the, the toddler's walking around and he's not walking with the mom or and the mom goes, okay, bye bye you know what I mean? And the kid goes, ah, and starts like screaming like crazy. I think that's like the worst thing you could possibly do because now they're gonna grow up having abandonment issues. They're in a deep mm -hmm. level of theta yeah. state. They're in like the deepest level of meditation they're ever gonna be in and they're just soaking that up. And that becomes their that becomes something that years down the road they have abandonment issues because one time mom at Smith's then then uh, you know pretended not to give a shit you know so it's it's being aware of that so a lot of this stuff happens when we were younger so it's really kind of about also getting back to I know Tony Robbins does this a lot I haven't been to one of his seminars but I have seen a lot of the work he does I've seen that documentary he's, he's, I'm Guru. He's, he's a beast he's great yeah. I, I, that's what I hear I, I've been wanting to go but, to but he does focus on the pump up and accomplish that's his right angle to optimize yeah. yes optimizing mm -hmm. willpower and, you know? and, and when you know trauma healing well it can a little bit look like 
uh, right. Uh, you know, like, yeah. uh, trying to get above it, even though he's the man. Oh, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. One of the things I've seen him do in his, uh, his, his talks, though, or his seminars, is he'll ask people what their earliest childhood memory is. Mm -hmm. Because what he's intending to do is to find out what that is, because a lot of times the earliest childhood memory we have, there's actually a memory before that that we've completely blocked out because we've been repressing it. And that may have been something that really, in a, in a deep way, has an effect on our belief system of who we are and how we identify ourselves. Mm -hmm. Now, all of this shit sounds real confusing because it's like, okay, now you're telling me I gotta remember shit I don't remember from when I was you know, three or four years old. The key is always awareness. So it's asking yourself this simple question, what would I have to believe is true to be experiencing this? Because here's the thing, emotions come from beliefs. Unless we have a belief, about something to be true, we won't have an emotion. For example, if it's a rainy day, a rainy day is a neutral idea. It depends upon my interpretation of a rainy day, what I, belie what I believe that means as to the kind of effect that I get out of it. So if I give it a positive meaning, then I experience positive emotion, but the idea itself is neutral. Now the key to all of this stuff is when you start to ask yourself the question, what would I have to believe is true to be experiencing this? You can then start asking your brain, what memory in my past may have attributed to this belief, to this pattern, to this belief that I'm not worthy, your brain will then look for the answers. The brain will start to find the answers. Maybe it takes you a day or two. Maybe you're walking the next day after you kind of frustrated, you can't remember what that is. And all of a sudden you're at the grocery store and you remember, wait, there was something that happened. I think I was, my parents were going through a divorce at four years old and I have this memory of something happening and you become aware of it. Now, here's the cool thing about this whole process. It is just as simple as becoming aware of whatever that belief is or whatever you have to let go of is. It doesn't have to be more complicated. A lot of times people are like, oh, it can't be that simple. I just become aware of the limiting belief or I just become aware of what I need to let go of and then it's solved. It can be that simple because the moment you are in the awareness of it, you see that maybe for 20 years you've been acting like a six year old. You've been responding the same way that you did when you were six years old and you're responding like that now that you're 26 years old but out of the awareness, without the awareness that that was something that happened when you were six, but you're playing that pattern over and over and over again. So the key is just becoming aware of it because in the moment of awareness, you realize that it doesn't relate anymore. It served you for a period of time of what we were talking about, the unconsciousness on being not aware of it. And then because you're not aware of it, linking up to the social conditioning of what everyone else is doing or just going on autopilot, the key is to be aware of it because in the awareness is where you gain your power back. Mm -hmm. The way that I think about it is like, when you do massage work, there's knots in your back, for example. Mm -hmm. And those knots were there to actually support you when your back needed to kind of put that there because maybe you're having some kind of imbalance, right? So it creates a knot. Right. But then the problem is that knot starts to fester on itself. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to the point that to get rid of it, you've got to massage it out. And when you massage it out, you're like, ah! It yep. And it hurts in the moment, but then later you receive a benefit. Yeah. And uh, the way that I think about it is that I want to be working on this on multiple different levels. So one level is trauma healing. Mm -hmm. That's something that I've seen you do at such a insane level. And when you do that, um, it's the crazy thing because you see the seminar of this, people are just letting go and releasing and releasing. And at the end of the day, it's not uncommon that people will come to me and they'll say, I did ayahuasca or DMT and this is like that. Now I've never done those, but people will say that to me. I'm sure you must be getting that like all the time. Yeah. And they, they're, they're feeling like they're in a, like they've been through a psychedelic odyssey right. and they're in this higher level of consciousness and the room, the energy gets insane. And I think that's why a lot of people will say they want to heal the world or raise the consciousness level of the world is because when you see a room like that and just what we can shift in a room, imagine if all society was like that. But that being exactly. said, we don't need all society to be like that. We don't you know, need to impose that on people because maybe someone's not ready, but it's really amazing what you can do with a group of people that are ready yeah. and see them go through that process or even in you know online academies, you guys have your academies and yeah. creating that environment online is even really amazing. I mean, I've just seen online groups that are so positive and people can just look forward to getting home and being part of it and raising themselves up and then getting into a higher uh, set of results, which then, of course, they have more good to share. And it, it, I just, I love upward spirals. Right. And I love, I love combining that with things like nutrition, herbs, lifestyle choices. You know, we talked about the sauna type stuff. You know, anything yeah. like that. And when you just keep feeding that and take the time to do that, really, I feel like sky's the limit. The big one for me too, and, and I'm huge on this, is I'm turning 39 this month. Now, I never thought that, that could happen. Like, how could I be 39? Remember when you're a kid, you know, you see your parents, they look so old, they look grumpy. And 
you never think you could turn 40. Right? I never thought I could turn 30, and then I did. <laughs> now I turned 40. <laughs> so the thing you realize is that every day is a gift and not guaranteed. And you're not always just going to be at, like at some party or some environment where you're supposed to laugh and have fun. Most of your life, the vast majority of it is going to either be spent, say, sleeping or doing a lot of work, work-oriented stuff or tasks. Right. And I mean, even like, think, I mean, this is like kind of weird to think about. Think how many more hours you're going to spend on the toilet. It's just going to be a lot of hours. <laughs> I mean, if you could just train yourself to just enjoy that more, I don't know what, exactly how you'd go about that. But, you know, whatever is your way. Um, just think of the number of hours of your life that you'd be more happy. So I always think to myself, in, those, in, in that kind of downtime or work time, how could I make this fun? Because... I think when we work, we're always like, soon I'll be, I'll be done this and then. And so I always wanna be eliminating the and thens or the I'll be happy when, because what happens is the synaptic pathways mm -hmm. in the mind retrain themselves on I'll be happy when. And this can be very surprising to people who see you kind of cracking jokes and laughing and having fun around maybe a serious matter or around things that should be taken more seriously. But even if you just look at us talking right now, just taking the time to enjoy it and have fun, mm -hmm. we're able to speak about all these different topics and be articulate and share all this information and pile it out. But imagine if conversely, we're in a kind of lower state of consciousness and it's like, we need to write out every note, hit each right. point down. And it's just, so the thing that I look at is, we talked earlier about majoring in minor things. That's a big one for me, a sign of low vibration is somebody majors in minor things. It can be very difficult when you've moved up to engage with somebody at that level yep. because they're gonna continually keep bringing it back to these minor things. You're like, you're like it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> Come on, right, let's go. And, and they wanna keep bringing it back down. So that's one of them. The other one though, which is so, so big, and I know that as teachers yourselves, both you guys have experienced this, is things just get easier in a state of higher vibration. Oh, there's, an, yeah. there's an ease to it. People, people in a lower vibration state, I know because I've been there, and I can go there still now. So what happens is, you know, when you fall off the wagon, <laughs> that's like hard quit, I'm like, <laughs> right? It's like you, when you go back into a low vibration state, things are just difficult. You've been triggered. So when you're talking to someone in a low vibration state, they're like, but this person said this, and this is happening, and they're looping on negativity, and it just seems difficult. You'll see it even when you're teaching in a room where all of a sudden it just becomes easier. And if you look someone in the eye, you say, think about your, your biggest problems right now. Do you think you can solve them? And they're like, yes. Oh my, oh my God, of course I can. But in a lower vibration state, it just seems like you're climbing up a mountain. So I've even seen this in say public speaking. I share that because both of you as speakers, we're all speakers here. I remember when I was younger, I would do, and, and I have all these on videotape too, which is so crazy, right? YouTube and all this stuff. I remember doing this, doing a talk might be so difficult and I would be nervous in front of the camera. And let's say that I was tired. You're way past your bedtime. He goes to bed early, I go to bed late. <laughs> <laughs> so you're tired, right? And I would be like, I can't do this while I'm tired. I remember one time I was in New York. I had a, about a 400-person audience waiting there the next day, including a couple celebrities. And I was staying at our friend Mike's house, and there was construction outside his uh, front of his apartment in New York. I slept about an hour. And, you know, I'm a younger guy, and I'm walking in there on one hour's sleep with all these people expected, and I'm just miserable thinking, how am I going to do this? Or there's been times where I've spent a lot of time and money maybe to travel, maybe earlier in my career when I wasn't in as much financial abundance, and I'm spending my last dollar to go to Phoenix, Arizona to shoot a certain type of video, and it's just not panning out, and the camera's on me, and it's hard, and I'm thinking about how broke I am, or, you know, I'm in front of a big seminar, and I'm thinking how it's just not gonna work out, and, you, you know, like maybe doing a product launch, and, you know, am I gonna say all the right things to show people how awesome this is, and, you know, and, and it just weighs you down, right? It gets in your head, it, it, it takes up camp in your head. And I just remember growing up, things just being so difficult, and oftentimes, I would have to push myself or spike myself into this kind of, it was kind of like this sort of short-term frenetic high vibration state that I would kind of just ride in order to get the job done. What I found as I got older was that those talks where I kind of rose above it and did my very best, now, even from just a relaxed mindset, I feel like I can communicate more power and more ease with minimal effort. Mm -hmm. Things just become easier. Mm -hmm. And this is what this has really become my obsession, these two things. One is the majoring in minor things mm -hmm. and just watching myself, but you know, observing it in myself when I'm just getting obsessed over things that are irrelevant instead of like the 10 things that if you actually focus on, your life would be amazing. Right. And so putting more and more time onto that. 
putting more and more time onto experiencing joy in the most common of situations, getting myself to start laughing, not letting the energy just die down, but enjoying each moment and valuing it and treasuring it. Mm -hmm. And then of course the other one, feeling that ease. And I'm gonna throw a, one last kind of weird one at you guys too, before I pass the mic around. Okay. I feel that you could even see this if you're a sports fan, <laughs> okay? So any sports fans out there, the truly great transcendent players, whether it's the Tom Brady's, LeBron James, or well, whoever you feel personally, because these are always up for debate with sport fans. If you watch them, they seem to be operating, they're in the same physical world as the other people on the court, but they seem to be in a different energetic reality. Yeah. Things are just easier for them. When you watch Stephen Curry just sink like this like semi half court shot, it's like he's almost not trying. I remember game one of the last NBA finals, you saw LeBron James almost beat uh, the Golden State Warriors, and for that first part, it's like it was like he was just in this different energetic reality where things are just easier for him. And pe and what happens then is then people start to react to him. They start getting into reaction to him and his energy, which then pushes them down more, right. puts them into a reactive state, and all the, and then all of a sudden it gets even easier and easier for him. Now, one realization that I had, and this was a really weird realization, was I was watching the, that game one, and LeBron James almost single handedly beat the best team, the Warriors. What was his name? Who's the guy that messed it was J.R. Smith, right? Yeah, so yeah. what happens is he almost wins the game, and then which is just like a miracle to just to watch this. If you yeah. know what you're watching, you can see it on a spiritual level. You're seeing a whole other level to this. A lot of people are surprised I'm a sports fan, and they don't understand what I'm getting out of it. I'm not like doing as Jerry it's Seinfeld the energy says. Energy momentum. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not. I'm not like we're from LA, right. go Lakers, right? You know, it's not like that. It's it, you know maybe a little, <laughs> but for the most part, <laughs> it's you know it's. It's, the, um, it's what I'm really seeing. It could be incredible, yeah. right? And so what I believe is that the universe puts, when we're on a mission to rise up, the universe will put these obstacles in front of us. Mm -hmm. And we're either, in spiritual growth, we say we go into the creator or the creation. What do we want, the creator or the creation? Do we need that physical thing? Or do we move up into a high vibration state? What are we attached to? Right. Are we going to stay rooted in our high vibration state? Or are we going to go into the physical? And typically the physical is always moving. There's that duality. Right. So you see LeBron, and he he actually um, had this incredible series a couple years ago. So he's in this one, and he, he literally performed what to me looks like a miracle. It was, yeah. And So you remember that game. Yeah, it's did. like watching a miracle, honestly. Yeah. And so then you see that he gets tested where jr smith does this ridiculous thing and he talk about a low vibration say this yeah. poor guy too he's had a pretty tough life so talk about trauma right so basically he um he thinks that they've won the game he runs the, the ball to half court and the game's tied lebron melts down pouts freaks out they lose the game bad and then afterwards he goes and punches the wall breaks his hand plays the rest of the finals I didn't know he broke his hand. with a broken hand wow didn't talk about it because he doesn't want to give them an advantage revealed at the end right so Damn. I saw that, and you know what I thought to myself when I watched, just from like a practical perspective, we want to mm -hmm. give a good practical tip here. Yeah. I thought, I've seen myself do that. Like maybe I'll be shooting a video and it was so good, and then we lost the audio or we lost the shot. And I get, I get frustrated, I get attacked, it's like a pain body attack, it's like, I want the video to be awesome and I care right. about it so much. And it, I lose it and drive me crazy. And then I can't, I, I just can't get it as good the second time around because I'm being attacked by low vibration energy. Right. But I remember seeing LeBron and thinking, if dude would just chill out and yeah. just keep doing what he'd been doing, like just chill, just do what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Just make it easy. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be like, victim, JR, right? and, and, and easier said than done, okay? Easier said than done. And <laughs> even now you can watch it and it makes so much sense, but when you're in it, very different story. I'm it's sure. like overwhelming, yeah. right? That's like telling someone on acid, like, don't see the pink elephant. You're like, I think I see a pink elephant. You're like, no, 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 don't see the pink, you know, right? Like, right. it's incredibly overwhelming when you're getting attacked with low vibration energy. And when you're out of it, you think you'll never be attacked again. But when you get pinged with it, it's it can be very challenging. When you focus your life on contribution, you don't get as frustrated by as many things because if it's not messing with this beautiful thing yeah. you wanna contribute, yeah. You don't care. So that got rid of like 99% of it. But then when that thing that I'm trying to contribute gets messed up, I get super triggered. Right. So what I actually had to do to shift internally was to say, even if I contribute everything that I have in this lifetime, someday the world's gonna end. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, it's still my responsibility to be joyful and present right now, regardless of, of what's outcome. happening. Still, yeah. take the, still take the lesson from it and try to mm -hmm. not have it happen again. Learn from it, make a new process, because otherwise you're just, I think you call that uh, spiritual bypassing, right? Where you're just like, I just be spiritual. I'm not going to fix my audio or something yeah. like that. So you still have to address it. Now, going from there, so I see LeBron, okay, and I realized to myself, 
if he would just chill, he'd just go do the same thing, he'd win the game. And then just do that the other games. Like, it makes sense, right? Right. So I had an experience where I was shooting, and, I, and we lost the audio. Now, again, I'm getting, now I, I'm getting triggered. And I remember that. And what I did was, in, in a weird way, you're, I'm feeling myself flooded with that negativity. But I use that to kind of propel myself into presence. Mm-hmm. Because the physical feeling is unpleasant. Right. So because of that, I'm not going to attach the physical anymore. I'm going to go into presence. And it was really weird, but it was like, it was like, kind of like probably how people would feel on Coke or something. I mean, right. I felt so good in my body. I, just, I felt amazing. And speaking became even more easy for mm-hmm. me. It was just easier than ever. It was just, and that was when I realized when I feel myself getting triggered, there's, that's actually a window of opportunity to move into another level. I feel right. like as we're moving up, we call on the universe to test us. And the universe says, do you want it? Yes. Do you want yes. it? Are you going to come into high vibration mm-hmm. or are you going to stay in the physical? So LeBron stayed in the physical. But if he would have just stayed, just stayed in that. It could have been different. would have just yeah. stayed in that same, like, I'm sure LeBron really cares, right? He's like, oh, no, that's what I did. <laughs> like these little dudes on the, on the porch talking about it. But, like, I really believe that, that if, yeah. you, if he would stay in that same zone, don't let your peace get disrupted. Do not allow your peace mm-hmm. to be controlled by these externals. Still take action, but your peace is number one. Yep. And if we say that, it will it amplifies and it grows and we grow in presence. So what in your work, you're getting people to let go of those yep. kind of things holding them down, these weights, mm-hmm. so that they can grow in presence. In your work, you're even going deep into power versus force, trans surfing, looking at these different pendulums that are carrying you in these crazy frenetic ways. Mm-hmm. And just when you, just the mere act of exploring this stuff, you know, for me, a lot of it comes from socializing, having fun and just living a lifestyle that feeds it and contribution. Mm-hmm. But overall, when you're looking in these different areas, the potential is so crazy yeah. of how different your life can be. And more importantly, not just how different your life will look, what a better life you're gonna manifest, but also how much you're able to enjoy that lifestyle because it's not just about getting the life, it's also having the ability to enjoy. I've, I've had roommates and, and friends that were loaded, loaded, and they're miserable in a castle, mm-hmm. miserable in heaven, right? It's like if we took a guy for like right off the street who's like on heroin, he's miserable, we bring him up here, up in the crib up here in the Hollywood Hills, I don't think that guy's gonna look that much different. He's still gonna be running off the bathroom doing whatever he's right. doing. So. You have to be able to even enjoy those things. And if you look, whenever you present solutions to people that are that are too high vibration for where they resonate, they glaze over. Yep. And as we see that, what I start to think is, when am I doing that? Right. right? What level have I not reached where people are, they're showing me the solution, mm-hmm. but I'm not seeing it yet. So I think it's always a series of inquisition. What solutions am I not resonating with? I'm not even able to physically see. What traumas haven't I let go of yet? What energetic phenomenon, you know, like pendulums and things like that, yeah. am I not aware of yet? And how, and just living this general lifestyle, I, I truly believe the sky's the limit. That's why we're so passionate about it. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah, I like what you said. Uh, I think that when it comes to what you did is when you first got triggered from everything that was happening when you lost the footage, mm. it's almost like you transformed the energy just by allowing the energy to be there because the prior pattern you had was that it was coming through and then you were resisting it because it shouldn't have been there and it was a constant reminder of the past experience. Mm-hmm. But it was the moment that it was looked at from a new perspective or it w- not even looked at from a new perspective. It was brought into presence. It was b- brought into being that things begin to change. So there's this triad of having, doing, and being. And you'll see that certain people that get into more of a resistant type state where they're really, really trying, Anytime you have to really, really try, you're creating a lot, a lot of resistance. So that trying comes from doing, but the key is when you shift into being. Now, the other part I'll talk about for a sec is understanding our self-image because the part that may have also been in a way coming back at you was the old Mm self-image. It was these barriers that we put in ourselves of our self-image for the way that we see ourselves. that the universe will sometimes give us a sign, give us something that happens that says, are you sure you have changed? Because it'll give you the old Mm -hmm. pattern. 
think everything we experience in our life is a mere reflection of what we believe to be true. If we wait for the mirror to change, we will wait forever. But the moment we allow the mirror to be different and we change ourselves is when everything changes. So the universe will give us this mere reflection every now and then of who we were before, because a lot of times there's a momentum to our self image because there's a pattern that we've all been living for a long period of time. So we continue to experience it. But the key is when we move from doing into being when we're aware of it and we make that choice to move forward because we understand we are shedding the old part of our self-image that no longer serves us. The self-image that's scared. A lot of times that's a self-image that likes familiar things. So it's trying to keep us safe. The self-image is trying to do and trying to keep us to survive. It's doing something quote unquote good for us in the eyes of that ego, that part of ourselves. We have to in a way nurture it, a know, know it's there and then make the conscious choice choice to continue to push through it. And when we do, we get to that high vibrational state. And in my own life, I've noticed that the more I have, I guess, become successful or really just been in the flow of what I do, the easier things become. In the very beginning of my, my and then, YouTube. And then you can write it. And then you write it. Exactly. And in, in, in reality, Transurfing, many of you have heard me talk about this thing called the wave of success. The wave of success is where you become aware of something that happens, you give it a positive meaning and you increase your state of being, and then you experience more of a reality that reflects that state of being and you keep writing that up. So the only time that'll knock you off the wave of success is if something happens and when something happens, you give it a negative meaning, it bumps you off that wave because of the meaning you're giving it. But remember, there is a reality where there's a positive that comes from it and a negative. It depends upon your perspective because whatever perspective you're in will be the pattern recognition that you see in your life. So the key to this is being aware of what those patterns are. Understand that self image is trying to do its best to keep you safe, nurture it, allow it to be there, but then make the conscious choice that you're going to move through anyways, and then shift from that of doing to being. It may be a little bit of a process. In the beginning, when I started daily videos on YouTube, I had to do for the first like 30 videos until I became and I saw myself as somebody that creates daily content, someone that generates a lot of content, high quality content. I started to embe embellish that into my self image. Then it became natural because I have begun to become it. And in that becoming of it, everything happens easier because it's a natural flow of who I am. So in a way, we're letting go of old layers. We're shedding mm -hmm. the old way of being. We label things so fast, you know, an experience. Like, say, hypothetically, right now, the camera just died. Like, we lost the video, camera died. Immediately, I would just sense my mind be like, no, the video's gone, it's fucked, it's over. And I would judge the experience. And whenever that happens, because it still occasionally does, I always remind myself, how do you know? How do you know it's bad? You don't necessarily know. Why are you so quick to judge? Something that is bad is when reality doesn't conform to what you think is good for you. But how do you really know? Perhaps the camera dying and losing the video is the best thing that ever happened to you. Some common ones that you hear all the time is, you know, my relationship ended. This is horrible. How do you know? How often did a relationship end for you to be in the future with someone else and you're like, thank God it ended because I met this new person. Someone else is way better for you or a job, you get fired, you're like, this is so horrible, and then you find a job that you were meant to be in. This is so common, so reflect on those moments. In fact, that's pretty much what happens every Every time. single time. <laughs> um, if you're taking action and being active. That's true, active. yep. Yeah. And next time something hits where you're like, oh, I can't believe this, how do you know? Even in terms of different emotions, you know, what causes us suffering is our resistance to it. Like, say you're anxious, how, why is that bad? Like what keeps you anxious, like what keeps you feeling bad is you feeling bad about feeling bad and feeling bad about feeling bad about feeling bad. If you were like, imagine all the videos you ever watched, it's like, hey, when you feel anxious, that's awesome. And you were conditioned that way. When anxiety kicks in, you're like, oh yes, awesome. And it would actually be an enjoyable, pleasant Exciting. feeling. Yeah. Exactly. So a lot of it's the labels, bring awareness to the different labels. I love also what you said about our identity. You gotta identify like, who are you? You know, what is your ceiling of success in all these different areas? In what ways are you hold, are you being held back? For me, an identity I had for a long period of time was the self-destructive artist, and it would always just keep pulling me back. I couldn't truly be successful or say healthy, so on and so forth, because then I was no longer self-destructive. Identify that, nurture it, embrace it. By embracing it, you'll let go of it, and then you'll expand beyond that. And the last point I'll say with the making things hard versus easy is 
view this as an example. A lot of us have a certain ceiling of success when it comes to the people we deserve to be with or be around, whether it's romantically or in terms of friendships. And you can catch yourself here, your ceiling is where you start feeling stifled around that person. So say you go on a date and you're talking to someone, and you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of in the same league or I'm actually outside their league. You're gonna feel very comfortable and things are just gonna flow, you're not gonna be stuck in your head, it's gonna be very easy. As soon as you're with someone who you believe is outside your league, based on again, conditioning, core beliefs, your identity, so on and so forth, suddenly you're gonna freeze and you're gonna start analyzing like, oh, they're outside my league and things are gonna be very, very hard. And the way we go about it is instead of identifying this ceiling, tracing it back to its roots, processing it, nurturing it, letting go of it, we act from there and then we try to find ways to cope with it. We're like, okay, they're out of my league. What can I say? Let me think of the perfect thing to say and things just become very, very hard. Um, and that's a lot of the patterns that people are stuck in in today's world. I used to be like that. There's still some cases where I am where it's like, we're always fighting against. The same with like self-sabotage. Instead of identifying self-sabotage and letting go of the, the source to just not have it, we have it and we just keep finding techniques and ways to fight against it and everything is heavy. Instead of doing that, identify the cause, let go of it. You shouldn't be stifled. You shouldn't have self-sabotage. It should be easy. And I like I said, sabotage. It sounds uh, fancy. Yeah. Tarje. Mm -hmm. Sabotage. So what I'm gonna do is Julian actually has a whole bunch of content where he has seminars where he shows people how to get rid of self-sabotage. He shows people how to know that they're worthy. Sabotage. Sabotage. Exactly. Sabotage. And he teaches and helps people understand that they are enough. Yeah. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna link to a playlist in the top of the description of the channel or of the, uh, the video. You'll see a playlist to some of his best content from understanding how to transform your life. I think it's really gonna be something that changes the way that you see how you view yourself. And there's some of my favorite videos that he's created. So if you wanna check that out, you'll see the playlist right under there. Also check out Owen, RSD Tyler, and Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, brother. I had a lot of fun. Fun first thank video. You. Yeah, of course. Sure thank you. It. And other than that, as always, peace, much love, and namaste.